and thank you for joining me as we start to explore a new avenue on the path of the seeker. I didn't intend to include the Kabbalah playlist with the three others that I have started in tandem. The other playlists are the seven tarot cards of the seeker, the seven Hebrew letters of the seeker, and the seven stages of alchemy. I wasn't sure how to approach the topic of the Kabbalah. The topic is huge. You can see the tree of life looks like this, and as you can see there are ten spheres. And I didn't want to stray from the pattern of seven that develops naturally with the other videos. Don't ask me why, I find that to be a highly entertaining synchronicity. Traditionally, in some schools of Kabbalah, the spheres are associated with the different parts of the human body. The tree also is said to portray the creator and the creation. But we are approaching all these systems from the perspective of how they can be applied in our everyday life for self-improvement. Rav Michael Lehman explains, There is nothing in reality except the self and the Creator. Everything that we perceive as real is only a reflection of the corruption of our attributes on our senses. This is why it is so important and I focus so much on the concept of know yourself. We are the reflection of the Divine. By knowing ourselves we come to know the Divine and that is why I always focus on the concepts I share as they relate to self-development. I was originally going to cover the Kabbalah Tree of Life the following way. Malkuth is at the bottom where the root chakra is in the chakra system. Yasad is on the same level as the sacral chakra. Hod is the right hip and Nazak is the left hip. Tifereth is at the same location as the solar plexus chakra. Chesed is the left arm and Jubara is the right arm. Bana and Chakma align with the third eye chakra and Kether the crown. However, I discovered something very important. Kether could not be included in this chart. Kether exists outside of physical matter reality. This is one of the reasons it doesn't seem that the Creator interacts with our world. As Dennis Hoffman explained in the Hebrew alphabet, A Mystical Journey, according to the great Kabbalist Rabbi Isaac Luria, God created the cosmos through a process known as Zimzum. This Hebrew term refers to a withdrawal or contraction of the divine, so that a void separate from God could exist. Out of that incomprehensible vacuum, matter and everything in the universe were able to come into being and develop. That then left me with a huge problem. There were no longer seven layers. In fact, when I realized this, I took a good long look at the diagram. Yes, I could say that Bana and Chokma aligned with the third eye and crown chakra, but that didn't seem right because Chokma would be then raised higher than Bana. Below the three supernals, as they are called, at the top of the tree is supposed to be a great void. The void can be bridged, as Rav Michael Leitman explains. The most important stage is the crossing of the barrier. Above the barrier, the soul knows the way by itself because it receives the light, which teaches it the next steps and the needed operations like a tour guide or map. However, to bridge that gap, you have to work your way up to being there. Now, there is said to be a hidden Sephiroth here, and I realized that this is where the heart chakra would be. But there is very little known about the hidden sphere of Dieth and the controversy about whether or not it should be included in the exploration of the tree. I have a theory about this based on a flood of synchronicities that I have experienced, which I will post next week in my blog. I wanted to study this subject more to come up with a plan. That's why I ordered the book by Dion Fortune after reading a bit of it, and I am currently reading it. I didn't plan on making this video until I had published the other 22 videos I've written. However, yesterday, I was going to start working on editing those 22 videos, and I realized I couldn't focus. So I turned off my computer, and I went to work on this tree of life drawing that was inspired by a vision in a meditation I had after I read the Hindu Bhagavad Gita, and I found myself writing this video in my head. That's usually what happens when the universe has different plans than I do. I find the inspiration for something I want to work on disappears, and the inspiration for what spirit wants me to work on flows out naturally. This introduction to the Kabbalah Tree of Life was challenging. The information is complex, and there are many opinions and interpretations on the topic. There are many systems applied to the Tree of Life, and many teachers with different opinions, intentions, and interpretations. Part of the information has been lost because the Catholic Church persecuted the Jewish people who practiced Kabbalah because it taught a process of how to develop a direct personal relationship with the Creator. The system is simple, and yet complex at the same time. As D. Unfortunate explains, To understand a Sephiroth, then, we need to know firstly its primary correspondences. Of this gathering of correspondences, there can be no end, for the whole cosmos, on all its planes, corresponds in endless sequences. 
we are constantly adding to our knowledge if we are good students. No better simile than that of the card index could be possibly found. I wasn't sure what system to use or how it blend with my sevens. But then a particular quote came to mind again and again from the Sefer Ra, which is the primary book of the Kabbalistic tradition. Ten Seferoth, out of nothing, twenty-two foundation letters, three mothers, seven doubles, and twelve simples. Those twenty-two letters correspond with the paths on the Tree of Life, and of course the twenty-two Hebrew, letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and the twenty-two cards of the major arcana of the tarot. The three are the supernals at the top of the Tree of Life, Kether, Chokma, and Bana, which I have circled here. Those, technically, are not Sephiroth that we, on our level of being, normally work with. The seven are the Sephiroth that are below the three supernals. A gulf is said to lie between the seven and three, which symbolizes that we are detached from divinity. This is what allows us to have the illusion of separation so we can build our individuality. So, realizing that there was a seven in the tree of life, I decided to stick to those seven Sephiroth. The path from which they emanated from Kether is a spiral, but from the two-dimensional aspect from which we can view the Tree of Life in this diagram, it looks more like a lightning strike. We can ascend in the same way, which is the pattern we will follow in these videos, or we can fly straight as an arrow through what is called the middle pillar. This is another way to view the Kabbalah Tree of Life. There is the pillar of mercy on the right, and on the left the pillar of severity. Our job is to reside within the middle, what Dion Fortune calls the path of the arrow, to equalize the forces of mercy and severity. All right, if you're around my age, you might be thinking of the Final Fantasy VII game, which has a villain named Sephiroth. The system they use to build weapons in the game, the Materia, is a word from alchemy. The name of the being that created Sephiroth is Jehovah. I am pretty sure that game was inspired by someone who researched the Kabbalah, and after watching these videos, you may want to go play that game again with new eyes. The Sephiroth on the Kabbalah Tree of Life are not villains, nor is Jehovah. They are not evil. So where does that name Sephiroth come from? Well, no one knows really, and many sources spell the name differently. John Van Alken explains the origin of the term Sephiroth, plural Sephiroth, sometimes written Sephiroth or Sephiroth, remains a mystery of antiquity. The Hebrew word for Sephir, remember there are no vowels in language, means to form, especially to form a sphere or orb. Some writers point out that this is a term akin to the Egyptian term Kefir, also meaning to form. But in the context of the sacred Egyptian beetle, Kipra or Kefra, which rolls its dung into a ball and toward the rising sun in the morning. It plants a seed in the dung ball, and by high noon, new life awakens, symbolizing resurrection. However, Marcus Katz disagrees. He explains, The Kabbalistic model of the universe, most often depicted as the tree of life, is composed of ten sephiroth. While these are commonly drawn in circles, a common mistake in many books is to refer to them as spheres. But the term is not related to the Greek word for sphere. In fact, it is closer in relation to the Hebrew word for sapphire which reflects the radiant nature of the divine. A number of other synonyms are used for the Sephiroth, sayings, names, lights, powers, stages, even garments, mirrors, and shoots. The Zohar refers to them also as aspects. By now, you can probably understand why I say that this is a complicated subject. There are so many opinions on how to interpret the tree of life. I prefer to keep things simple instead of overthinking them. So that is what we are going to do. Keep things simple and personal as they relate directly to us and how we can personally apply these concepts to have a better and healthier life. I have studied multiple sources and I will focus on what they agree upon and leave out all that they disagree upon. Here are the primary books I will be referring to. Path of the Kabbalah by Rav Michael Leitman, PhD. The Magician's Kabbalah by Marcus Katz. Edgar Casey on the Kabbalah by John Van Alken. The Mystical Kabbalah by Dion Fortune. Finally, there's Paul Foster Case's The Tarot, A Key to the Wisdom of the Ages. Although not written on this specific subject, the information is in there, and I have to include it because he does such a fantastic job of covering different spheres on the Kabbalah Tree of Life. I may also reference his book of tokens from time to time. We will buck the traditional way of teaching and ascend up the Tree of Life, starting with Makuth, also known as Kingdom, just as we have with almost all of our other systems. Rav Michael Leitman explains... The fact is, the ascent from below is personal and differs from one person to another. 
There are certainly common methods, general rules, degrees, and phases of the ascent. But though the ways are common to all, each experiences them differently. The spiritual world is obtained from below upward. But in order for this instruction to be suitable for everyone, Kabbalists wrote it from above downward, not from below. You might wonder why you would want to depart on this journey of studying the Kabbalah. Well, the most potent universal symbols I have ever come across lie within the system. These symbols were present in my dreams before I stumbled across the subject two years ago. And I am not the only one who has noticed this. Carl Jung started studying alchemy and then Kabbalah because of the dream symbols and meanings that he encountered with the majority of his patients. Remember the story about how Carl Jung coined the term synchronicity and how it involved the beetle, much as John Van Auken talks about the Egyptian dung beetle a lot? Well, if you don't remember or know that story, I have a link to the video I created for synchronicity in the description box below. These universal symbols, known as archetypes, are really prevalent. They are the language of the subconscious. This is the system that helped me with my spiritual breakthrough, and I continue to study it because there are many facets of it that I have yet to explore. That is one of the reasons I like the fact that cats, says the Sephiroth, are more like sapphires than simple spheres, because each of them are multifaceted. By learning the language associated with the Tree of Life, while also studying the Tarot, you can start the dialogue with your subconscious that I have been talking about. The method used by the modern initiate for interpreting the language spoken by the ancient myth is a very simple and effectual one. We find in the Kabbalistic Tree of Life a link between the highly stylistic pagan systems and our own systems of philosophy and psychology. We use a philosophical conception of the tree to interpret what it represents to our conscious mind, and we use the symbolism to link it up with our subconscious mind. When the two are linked together and brought into polarized function, they yield superconsciousness, which is the goal. Thank you for joining me in this introduction video. This is a subject I continue to explore, and I hope you enjoyed this series of videos. May you find joy and peace on the path of the secret.